Hi, you guys. So I thought we would eat lunch together real quick, just in case I don't have like um, a serious vlog for today on Thursday. This vlogmas just seems a little kind of like bland compared to a lot of the stuff I did last year. Um, we've just been so busy and a lot of the shopping I did was online. But today I have no choice but to get my house in order. I was gonna, if I have time a little later, I will wrap gifts and finish that last blanket. But boy, my house has been neglected. It's already Thursday and I haven't done anything. And yesterday was a long day at work so I didn't have to go in till, I only had to go in for a couple hours this morning. So we're eating like a later lunch. I made broccoli soup last night. No one in my family eats it except me and my sister, but my sister doesn't live here anymore. My husband and daughter won't eat this. I've been eating broccoli soup, I think since I came out of the womb, really. My grandmother used to make it for me all the time. And then I found like a recipe on my own that I tweaked. I'll put the recipe down below for you. And I know sometimes eating isn't everybody's cup of tea watching, but I know that I enjoy eating shows. I do, I love them. Number one, I love that what they're made for. It's to make people feel less lonely. It makes people, I love seeing comments like, hey, you know, I suffer from this type of eating issue and you posting daily makes me feel less alone and want to eat. Um, I definitely have a up and down relationship with food. As a plus size woman, I always have. So is my sister. It's typically a source of comfort, not fuel, which I think a lot of people can relate. But um yeah, I think that's nice to just be like, oh, you know, let's eat lunch together. Now, this isn't like a big thing on my channel. I don't maybe have one other video like this, but I was going to eat anyway, so I figured we'd talk. Now, this recipe is so easy. I'm going to tell you it's like the, it's semi-homemade, I guess. Mm. It's rich and really good. Now, broccoli soup isn't difficult to begin with this is more of a chowder like a because there's potatoes in it as well and you definitely can do what you want with it so i was in weight watchers years ago and found something this this is what this recipe was based off of i don't know where the original recipe is i i got it 15 years ago this is my sister's she and I are soup and stew people. We love it. Men don't seem to love soups as much. Now, my grandfather loves a good soup. Not my husband. He's kind of like a pain in the ass. He doesn't love it. He doesn't feel like it's food. And like when I make chicken noodle soup, he won't eat the broth. He just likes the innards. He's a pain in the ass. And my daughter, she's like iffy. My husband likes stews because they're thicker and heartier. So for this recipe, what I do is I take two cans of cream of potato soup. And at first I saute an onion, like maybe a quarter of an onion, because I don't want too, too much onion in it. And I cut it really fine and I saute that till it's translucent. You don't need to like caramelize it. You don't want to do all that. You just want to cook your onion. This point you could do fresh garlic as well, minced garlic, or you could do wait and put garlic powder in is what I usually do. This is one of the recipes where I do use more garlic than most of my recipes. I do enjoy garlic. I'm not going to lie. Like roasted garlic is one of my favorite things. Are you okay back there? My dog loved this. I know I shouldn't have given it to him and I just gave him a little taste, but he loved it. This is great with breads, uh, crackers, pretty much anything. So I take two cans of either Campbell's or the off brand of some type of cream of potato. Now you could do cream of broccoli, but I like the potatoes in it. I saute my onion. You could add flour, but typically once this cooks down for a little bit and you add your cheese to it, um, it thickens itself, but you could add a little cornstarch or flour at that point. Then I add the two cans of cream of potato. I do two and a half cans of a whole milk. You could do 2% if you wanted to, and you also could do heavy cream, but I like the, the whole milk. So I start out, uh, are right, you guys? Sorry, my dogs uh, saw the little, literally they see this um, boxer daily. I don't know why they bark. I also have a palette coming today. I'm so excited to show you guys. It's the first palette I've bought in months. So I don't know where I left off. So the more cans you use, um, it's going to feed more people. For two cans is going to be enough for me to have dinner last night. I had one bowl last night. I'll have a bowl for lunch and I'll probably eat it tonight for dinner. And I'll still have a little leftover, so I'll either freeze it. Oh, 
you're such a pain in the neck, give it to my sister or I'll eat it for uh, lunch tomorrow, which is Friday. So yeah, I'll probably have it for lunch tomorrow. But the more canned, so if I was feeding my sister myself and maybe a few other people, I would do four cans. So I do two cans of the cream of broth, no, cream of potato. And I start with just two cans of milk. So I fill the milk in. So I guess that would be maybe a cup. So what is a can? Eight ounces? I don't know. Two cups. That's how I measure it. I'm sorry. I'll put the real measurements down below. I'll do the conversion. And then I reserve about a half to another full cup. And I set that aside. So I get it all stirred in. I do frozen broccoli because the real like real broccoli it takes so long to cook down so I do my one bag of broccoli if you're doing four cans do two and I mince up my I cut my broccoli pretty small but I'm going to keep going in I don't have an immersion blender so I continue to kind of crush it up so I season the broccoli after I cut it up with salt pepper and garlic I add it to the pot and I let that simmer for about 15 to 20 minutes until the broccoli is ready to kind of be blended but I like chunks in it so I don't Stop it. Psst, psst. Stop eating the plant, Peach. Stop it. You're going to get sick. Why does she eat the plants? So I let the broccoli simmer in this chowder. I don't put the cheese in yet because you don't want the cheese to get gritty. If you put cheese in super hot temps or you don't take it off the heat, it can get that gritty. Have you ever had a macaroni and cheese that's kind of gritty? That can happen. That's why when I make my roux for macaroni and cheese, I always take it directly off the heat to initially put the cheese in. And it usually helps with that graininess from cheese. I don't know what it is about cheese and heat that makes it grainy. Mm. Sorry, I know that's a little disgusting. Somebody's not going to be happy. <laughs> um, let me get a new clean napkin. So I let it simmer down continuously stir because you don't want to burn the bottom now you everything's cooked obviously so you can start tasting it for seasoning it's going to need more garlic than you think add your garlic this winterberry spice is probably my favorite drink i've had in a long time i'm so upset it's seasonal i'm really like into sprite right now i get these phases where i love and i know sprite isn't good for me How's the Sprite Zero? Is it good? Is it similar to regular Sprite? I've never had it. I don't like Coke Zero, so that's typically why I drink Diet Coke, which isn't good for me. I let it simmer, and I start taking a wooden spoon and kind of just breaking up the broccoli, <clears throat> but continues to, to like stir, but you want to keep it on a low heat. I know this is like most people know, but this is my broccoli soup. I will leave the recipe. I mean, look how good it looks. So then I'll let you out in one minute, bud. Um, right at the end, so the last 10 minutes, I add a good sharp cheddar or regular cheddar. Last night I had a Mexican blend, a Mexican blend. So it had cheddar, Monterey Jack, um, queso. So it really made no difference. It actually made it even better, to be honest with you. So the last 10 minutes, I eat, I add probably two cups of cheese. I let it melt slowly. And then that's when I add the extra milk that I need. You might not need the extra milk, but you're probably going to need a little more than two cups of milk. And then you just eyeball it and then you eat it. Literally the whole dish takes me less than a half an hour. And for a chowder, that's not bad. You could definitely add anything here now. You could do corn. You could do any kind of, I just think it's so simple and plain and I really don't, except for my crazy ass family, my husband and my daughter know someone who doesn't love broccoli, like a block broccoli chowder or a broccoli, it's like a potato broccoli soup. I gotta let these dogs out, hold on guys. Now, before my mom passed away, she used to cook a lot of meals for my grandmother. A lot of the meals kinda came from my aunt and unfortunately some of the recipes I just don't have of hers. Some I do. So my mom ran a bakery for a little while back in the 90s and my aunt Kathy has a lot of her recipes because my mom taught her and she came and took over the bakery and my mom moved over to the kitchen portion. So like my mom used to make these big chocolate chip cookies. They used to be like this big and these humongous blueberry muffins. I have those recipes but they're hard because they're meant for <clears throat> a bakery or a restaurant setting. 
So they're meant for 30 at a time. So you have to convert the math, which can be difficult when baking. But like some of my mom's meals that she used to make special for like my grandmother's birthday, like um, flounder frances or chicken frances, she would make her. And there's this chowder, it's corn chowder. If anyone has any good corn chowder, I would love to surprise my grandmother with it. Um, I just don't have my mom's. And I know I could Google it, but sometimes people have like home chowder recipes and corn chowder, I think, I've never had it. I'm sure it's easy enough, but I would love to hear anybody's uh, recipes that they have. But, yep, this is mine. It's super simple, and I never, ever fed it to somebody that didn't absolutely love it. I know, you're waiting for your bite. I'll give you some in a minute. <laughs> Can you see him, or is it too sunny? Honey, get out of the sun. He thinks he's a person. He thinks he was born in, from mommy's belly, but you were adopted. Mm -hmm. I, I know, I don't need judgment. My cat's on the table too. Let me turn you around and show you my cat. Can you see her? I don't know if you can see her. Uh, go ahead and judge if you need to. I don't know <laughs> what to tell you. They're the loves of my life and that's what makes me and my family happy. I know there are people that literally put their animals outside at dinner time and I tell them that all the time. So I'm in this dilemma with these two dogs. I have a feeling it's my fault, but I would love someone's opinion nicely, please, because it's already stressful enough. They are completely potty trained. Butters is six, going to be six in January, and he's three. They're potty trained. That's not the issue. They've never done this before. This is something new. So right before bed, they go out and do their business. And now they have this new habit of waking up in the middle of the night and crying at the door and like, I mean, they will not give up wanting to go back. So now it's disrupting my sleep bad where I'm in that REM state where I'm knocked out, being woke up by them to potty and um, not being able to fall asleep right away, stuff like that. And it's not like, oh, I can just open the back door. I have to come downstairs. It's a whole process. It's annoying. Now they can make it the whole day. No barking. It's the trash truck. They make it an eight hour day without potting in the house. So it's not that they can't hold their damn bladder. I don't know if they're faking when I let them out before bed. I don't know what's going on if I'm letting them eat too late in the evening and drink too late in the evening. I can't figure out the problem because they're eating dinner around five o'clock the same as us. So by nine o'clock their bowel should be moving. They should be okay to make it through the night. And they have for years. This has all been like the last four months. I've noticed it, but it's been worse the last month. And it's both of them. If it was one dog, I'd be like, oh, maybe he has a urinary tract infection. But it's both of them. Insisting on coming down in the middle of the night. They drink water and go right out. And then they go right back to bed. But it's disruptive. Very disruptive now. And I know some people are going to, I just don't know, they're going to be like, oh, keep them out of your bed, but they're still needing to go out. I don't know what's going on. And they do go out and use the restroom, but so not last, maybe they need to be stimulated more, maybe they need to be walked. And that's what I thought. So I took them for a walk last night and the night before. The night before, they made it through the whole night. It was fabulous. Last night, I took them for a walk. They peed 800 times before bed. They're male dogs. They pee till they're literally drained empty. We go to bed at 9.30, midnight rolls around. They need to go out. And it isn't a situation where like I'm sleeping in. I'm up at 6 o'clock. So they're in bed from 9.30 to 6. I feel like they should make it as mature, like they're adult dogs. So I can't figure out what's going on except maybe I now because I allow it their body peach stop eating that I just don't know what's going on and I would like opinions on maybe how to break this terrible cycle because they make it if I leave for a work day if I leave at 8 a.m and I'm home by 
two or three, four, they make it through the whole day. So I can't figure out what in the world is going on. And like I said, I thought if it was one dog, maybe they're having urinary problems, but it's both of them driving me bananas. And my poor husband, he has to get up at four. He does intensive hard labor throughout the entire day. And it's not that he wouldn't get up, but I feel guilty waking him up. It's just really rough. And I don't know what's going on with the two of them. They're already difficult enough to get outside. And I think it's just because they're little dogs and that's how little dogs are. So I thought walking them would be the solution and I'm gonna keep doing it. And then I thought maybe to give them, I bought like that dog safe melatonin. <clears throat> Not for like long term, but maybe just to get them back in the habit of sleeping through the night. So I bought the whatever was safe online. I've had it in the cabinet since Gilly had his surgery a couple years ago. Made sure the expiration date was okay. And I give them a little piece of that. And even that's not keeping them asleep. And it's, I think, six milligrams, but I'm not sure. It might not be that much. Maybe it's three. I don't know what to do for them. And it's not like we do not sleep with the television on. We sleep with a fan on. So there's a little bit of white noise. Nothing could be waking them up. I just don't know. I don't know what's going on. But it's becoming um, very disruptive. And they say like your dog shouldn't be that disruptive to your life. But other than that, I'm just gonna finish up these last couple bites. I hope that every one of you ate something today. Definitely try to fuel your body. Especially when I was little, my mother struggled to pay bills to feed us. And I will never forget when she would make sure we all ate. And then if there was leftover, she would eat. And if there wasn't, she didn't eat till she went to work the next day, which could be very, I guess at the time you don't realize it. But it definitely is traumatizing. And my youngest sister, Hannah, um, was a very um, fussy child. Like, very temperamental. Like a little kid, the, the youngest child. So my middle sister, in order to um, kind of like stop her from having temper tantrums, would feed her. So she's always like associated food with that. So like if my sister, hold on, I gotta get my dog again. Okay, so I don't really have a lot of time talking, but if my sister was having a temper tantrum, Gabby would make her a PB&J or, and they're like little three or four years old, making peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, but. Definitely make sure you eat something today, even if it's just an apple. Just make sure you're doing what's right for you and your body, taking care of yourself. I know food can be very scary for people, and unless you've dealt with it or been um, educated in that kind of situation, it can be very like, what do you mean? But it definitely can. This is so nice. At first, I didn't know if I liked it, and now I can't get enough of it. I like this better than the cranberry ginger ale. So I know we didn't talk about anything too cool, but maybe someone just ate lunch with me and was able to enjoy their stuff. I have so much cleaning to do, so I'm going to get all that done right now. My husband should be coming home a little early today because it's just a little too cold to shoot gun night. I don't know anything about it, so... They should be coming home a little early today, so I want to get stuff done so that I can get some wrapping done. And I got to finish that one blanket for my sister. So I'm going to put a good podcast on, and I will either be back a little later in the day because I'm going to make meatballs for dinner. I'm pretty sure I've done my meatball recipe twice on here already. So I can't imagine that anyone wants to see it again, but maybe I'll just toss it in here. Peach, Psst. Why do you keep eating the leaves? Man, cats are, uh, they're pains sometimes. So I will see you all soon. Definitely make sure 
you eat something good today and I will make sure to write out the entire recipe for you if anyone is interested because I know there's got to be out. I don't really know many people who don't love broccoli soup other than my crazy ass husband. Hi you guys. So my palette came and I'm super super excited. This was for my birthday. Let's see. I want to put my light on so we can definitely see it. I don't even know if that makes a difference because it's so bright out. I don't, I want white. Yeah. So I'm hoping that it's okay. I don't love the packaging for a palette. So we shall see. Hopefully it's pretty good. My hair is up funny because I've been cleaning and I just didn't want the curls in my face to be honest. Now this is a glitter palette. So this is an indie brand. It's playing in makeup by Yolanda. I bought the original palette. I'm actually wearing the glitter today, as you can see. Um, I bought the original glitter one palette two years ago, maybe a year ago, two years ago, a while. And I saw she recently came out with the second one. I will be doing this on my TikTok as well. Um, the glitter two eyeshadow palette glitter obsession oh, glitter obs why can't i say obsession glitter obsession two palette i ordered it on the 6th today is the 14th so not bad oh i have to pay my one credit card i just thought about it and it appears that we got a free gift what nice so let's look at the free gift an eyeshadow foundation base Ooh, I haven't had an eyeshadow base in a long time. Nice. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. So I'm going to assume it's kind of like, it's either going to be like the Urban Decay or it's going to be like maybe a, um, a glitter. Oh, it's blue. It's blue. Oh, it's, it's blue. Eyeshadow foundation base, blue. Okay, so weird choice of color. Um, we'll get back to that. That is not what I would have chose. <laughs> That's okay, not my problem. I didn't pay for it, luckily. Um, it does stain. All right, so here is the palette. I'm praying to God that everything is okay. I love the packaging. I love colorful stuff. As you can obviously clearly see, I love makeup, but I especially love glitter. I hope it's as beautiful as it was looking online. And the first one, you guys, I probably use it daily. I probably use it daily for, wow, for the last two years. This is gorgeous. Now, this one's going to make me a little nervous. I'm afraid some of it's going to fall out. Now, see, with glitter, you have to understand what you're getting yourself into. It's not going to be perfect okay that's number one i see a couple colors that look like repeat colors that's okay actually i see one two three four five that are kind of repeaties okay let me get this off so i can show you i want to keep this now i've always kept this on to preserve the glitter so i have the original one i have the tati palette as well but yes, I use this all the time. So look at this. Look at this. So you get this fantastic. I'm not going to swatch this, you guys. Unless somebody specifically asks me to swatch it. Or you want certain colors swatched. If I sat here and tried to swatch all of these for you. Now I feel bad. Okay, so I'm going to show you what originally caught my eye. So I thought this was a finely milled blue but I'm noticing it's a little thicker, but that's okay because I love it. So you have, let's start over here. So you have this orange, you have this amazing lime green. Am I okay? Lime green. Then you have this more foresty Kelly green. Gorgeous. This is gorgeous. This is kind of like a true blue. Then you have this more, this is Kelly. This is forest green. Then this looks like a, um like a navy then right next to it on camera for some reason it's pulling purple but in real life this one's green hold on there's yeah it, i can't pick it up so in real life this one's green i don't know why it's picking up purple 
maybe it's reflecting from these darker ones that's green so you have this gorgeous gold will be beautiful for christmas then you have this like mossy green another moss green which is gorgeous this is gold okay yes it's picking up gold then you have another gold this beautiful burnt orange this mermaidy blue i don't know why i'm telling you the colors but a burnt orange a black another purple this pink seems to be a little bit of a repeat and this these two greens are now i see them they're not but this is definitely one i have in the original palette somewhat this is gorgeous this is like a coral then you have this pinky one this is pink this is pink this is gorgeous i'm so excited for this ethereal white one another white one this is my dream color right here two a red two dark pinks and this color is so cool now when i have these chunky glitters they are thick i have a few in the other palette in order to use them i typically use like a tweezer now i know I'll pack it on, like, I'll, I'm not packing on because they're so thick, but I'll take it with a brush and then I'll manipulate it with a tweezer. So it's definitely something you're going to want to work with. These are learning curves. I definitely don't um, think they're like, they're fine for, for beginners, absolutely. But you're going to have to learn how to kind of use them. It's so beautiful, man. That blue looks like Cinderella. Here it is. That looks like Cinderella. It is just so beautiful. Now, I don't know if it says not safe for your eyes, all that BS. I want to try her other palettes. I really, really do. So her handle is playing in makeup by Yolanda. She has Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Doesn't look like she has YouTube. Or... Excuse me, is that YouTube or is that Instagram? I think that's Instagram. I love this. It's gorgeous. You right? Oh my God, I'm so excited. Let's swatch one of them. Let's just see. So, oh, it's so tough because I don't really want to mess with it too much. So I do a TikTok with it. Let's, play, let's see what this one looks like because it's darker. Oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. So if you see any colors on here that you want me to kind of play with or swatch for you, oh my gosh, it doesn't budge once it's on. Look at that. Wow. What I love about them is that they have, that's like a red, white, and blue. That would be really pretty for the 4th of July. What I like about it is um, it looks like it's one color in the pan. It's not coming off. And then... Um, it has so many dimensions to it. It's not even budging. <laughs> it has such, sorry, that's disgusting. I shouldn't do that. I'm going to go wash my hand. Um, it just, it's not budging. If that tells you anything, it doesn't budge. What I love about it is it's multi-dimension. Like you might swatch one of these and uh, think, okay, so that's all black, but in it, I can tell there's something else going on. I can't believe this one won't pick up green. Will it pick it up at all? No. Why does it look like that? I'm telling you, in real life, this is like, there's green reflex in it. I'm so, I've been waiting for this to come. So I'm so excited about this. I'm going to go film a TikTok on it ASAP. I paid for this with my own money. I did not get any type of discount or Although I would love to work with her, but no, I did not get anything. I don't know how big her TikTok is. I'll have to go look. Look at how dark that eyeshadow base is. I don't know what that is. I'm going to definitely have to watch her channel. But I wanted to share that with you because I've been waiting for it. So I'll add that in today's with my eat lunch with me. Um, what time is it? Oh my gosh, it's 10 and 1. So I'm definitely going to get my dinner started here very soon. Like I said, I was making meatballs today i just didn't want my hair down in my face i usually don't put it up the first few days i curl it but i just needed it out of the way so i hope this palette is like as pretty as i think it is